Good day everyone. I had already released a video by tree authorization processing which covers overview on how authorization processing works. In this video, I'm going to delve a little bit more deeper on how traditional payment card authorization works, including a bit of ISO 8583. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the protocol and the message formats used and the technical flow of authorizations from the financial institutions to schemes and anatomy of an ISO 8583 message. Before we jump into the details of how authorization processing works, let's first try to define what is a protocol and what is a message format. So when two people want to communicate to each other, they can write a letter to each other or make a telephone call or chat via messenger. So this method of communication is called as protocol. So one of these communication methods is called as a protocol for that particular communication. And when they want to communicate to each other, they should communicate in a language that both of them understand. So let's say if one person talks in Spanish and the other in English, they're not going to understand what they are going, what they are communicating with each other. So they have to talk in a common language. So this common language is nothing but the message format that these parties would use. So protocol is the method of communication and message format is the language in which they communicate to each other. So in case of a traditional payment transactions, the protocol that is used is TCP IP socket. That is the mode of communication that is used and the message format that these parties exchange is ISO 8583. There are many protocols like TCP IP socket, HTTP, MQs, etc. But for traditional payment methods, the protocol used is TCP IP socket. I'm going to cover ISO 8583 uh, in detail in the subsequent slides. So this is the same protocol TCP IP socket and ISO 8583 that is used between POS to the acquirer acquirer to scheme, scheme to issuer. So all these parties use the same protocol and message format in case of a traditional payment card transactions. Newer payment protocols that is um, MVISA which I covered in one of the previous video are not into this particular category. They use HTTP APIs and they use XML or JSON formats. So how does a transaction switch communicate to the schemes? Visa and MasterCard, I've taken an example of Visa and MasterCard in this particular presentation. So Visa and MasterCard provide a hardware and a software called as MIP or VIP. MasterCard uh, calls it MasterCard Interface Processor, MIP, and Visa calls it as Visa Access Point. So they provide a hardware uh, and a software which sits on the issuer data center. So the issuer transaction switch or the acquirer transaction switch can communicate to the schemes only via this particular MIP or WAP device. So the communication from the financial institution is routed through this particular device. This particular device takes care of securing the communication and establishing a reliable communication channel to the schemes. The transaction switch typically acts as a client socket in terms of TCP IP socket and Visa acts has its own server socket. So the transaction switch establish a connect, establishes a connection to the schemes to send transactions between each other. So this is how a typically technical flow of authorizations work. So we saw the protocol and now let's look at the message format that is used in traditional payment processing. So ISO 8583 is the message format that is used in all the traditional payment methods. ISO 8583 uh, has three variants, 1987, 1993 and 2003. Um, 1987 is the predominant version that is used by majority of the schemes. And there is no major difference between all these three versions, except that there are few field and changes uh, and uh, additional data elements, etc. ISO 8583 is adopted by the schemes and then modified according to their use. 
and in Australia it is called as AIDS AS2805 format. So now let's look at how does an ISO8583 message look like. An ISO8583 message has three components. It has an MTI, it has a bitmap and it has a data that is the data payload of the message. So MTI means message type indicator. It indicates the type of message. It's a four digit numeric number. So let's see what does each of the digit means in the four digit numeric number. First one indicates the version of the message, which version of the ISO 8583 format uh, is being used. So if it is zero, it is 87 version. If it is one, it is 93 version. If it is two, it is 2003 version. The second uh, byte of the message indicates the purpose of the message. That is, is it an authorization message? Is it a financial transaction message? Is it a file update message? So it is the most uh, important byte in the MTI, which signifies the type of authorization message that we are dealing with. The third one defines the function of the messages. Is it a request or a response or just an advice being passed? To the party. So request and response are very clear. Advice messages actually mean that the decision has already been made and we are just informing the outcome of that particular decision. So these are called as advices. And the last byte indicates the source of this particular authorization message. Zero means acquirer, two means issuer. All these values are not exhaustive. I have uh, covered the important ones. So if the MTI is 0100, it means that the authorization request has been issued by an acquirer and is in ISO 8583 1987 format. Similarly, if the message, if the MTI is 1302, then it is a file update message initiated by the issuer in the 1993 format. The second part of the ISO 8583 message is called as a bitmap. Bitmap provides the information of which all data elements are present in that particular authorization message. In 1987 um, format, typically an authorization can contain about 128 data elements, whereas in 93 format it could contain up to 192 data elements. So primary bitmap is used to tell if the presence of data elements 2 to 64 is present, where the secondary bitmap indicates the presence of 65 to 192 data elements. So let's take an example so that we understand easily. So if you see here, this is the primary bitmap. So the first byte indicates if the secondary bitmap is present, that is if there are more than 64 data elements present in that particular authorization. And from the second bit, each bit indicates the presence of the corresponding data element. That is, the second bit indicates the presence of the second data element, that is DE2. And the third bit indicates the presence of the third data element. And the fourth bit indicates the presence of the fourth data element and so on till 64. So if the bit is set to 1, it means that that particular data element is present. And if the bit is set to 0, the data element is not present. So in this particular example that you see here, uh, data elements 2, 3, 4, 7, 11, 12, etc. are all present. So the index of that particular bit number signifies if that particular data element is present. Each of this particular four bits are combined in a hexadecimal format and then packed in a hexadecimal uh, digit sequence. That signifies the bitmap. So in this case, if you see 0111 signifies the digit 7 and 0010 indicates 2 and so on. If you see the bitmap is formed as 72370541 etc. on based on the hexadecimal number of this particular bitmap. Now let us see what are data elements. Data elements are the individual fields which consists of all the transaction information. Each field has its own meaning and has its own syntax. When I say syntax, some fields can be numeric, some fields can be alphanumeric, the way data is populated onto the data elements. So data elements is the actual payload which contains the transaction information. This slide provides only few data elements 
the important ones like the DE2 means the card number, 3 means the processing code, 4 is the transaction amount. This is certainly not an exhaustive list. I'm going to give a subsequent video where I'm going to give all the important data elements and how to identify specific transactions. So overall, this is how an 8583 message looks like. The first four bytes highlighted in yellow are the MTI and the ones highlighted in the blue is the, uh, the bitmap and all the fields that is highlighted in green are the data payload. So this is a sample 8583 message. Thank you for watching the video. Do like and subscribe. Thanks.